Chapter 1. Developmental Strand. A Pattern to Teenage Development and a Blueprint for How Girls Grow. There's no need to talk about teenage girls in a new way because people's perception isn't fair to girls or helpful to their parents. People talk about adolescence as if it's bound to be a harrowing, turbulent time for teenagers and their parents. They make raising a teenage girl sound like a roller coaster ride where the whole family hops on, white knuckles their way through, and the parents hope that after all the ups and downs, their daughter steps off at the end as a good and happy adult. Life with your teenager doesn't have to feel like a mess. To give us a new and helpful way to talk about teenage girls, Dr. Damore organized the adolescent journey into seven developmental strands. These developmental strands reveal the achievements that transform girls into thriving adults. Having a map of adolescent development makes it easier for you to guide your daughter toward becoming the grounded young lady you want her to be. When you comprehend what makes your daughter tick, she suddenly makes a lot more sense. This summary aims to offer you a new way to understand your daughter, not tell you how to raise her. It helps parents untangle themselves from the emotional knots they get caught in with their teenage daughters. By providing you with a blueprint for the work of adolescence, this summary will help you to worry about your daughter less offer her helpful assistance on her journey through adolescence, and recognize just how much developmental ground she will cover as a teenager. While a teenager remains inconsistent in her behavior, she may suffer, but she does not seem to be in need of treatment. Rather, it is her parents who need help and guidance so as to be able to bear with her. Anna Freud Chapter 2. Don't miss the opportunity to let your daughter know that your position is one of concern, not judgment. Girls don't dump their parents just for the sake of it. They pull away to start their journey on the seven developmental strands of adolescence as they part with childhood. By age 12, most teens feel a sudden internal pressure to separate themselves from almost everyone that seems childlike. A girl's pleasant relationship with her family is usually one of the first casualties. Family meals contribute to girls' health, academic achievement, and overall sense of well-being. When it comes to parting with childhood, your daughter has a lot of developmental ground to cover in a short time. She has to get from point A, where she happily holds your hands in public, to the point where she claims the independence that comes with being a young woman, hence trading her goofiness for relatively mature behavior. One way to deal with this transition is to start by allowing your daughter more privacy than she had as a child. Establish a family time one evening a week, or as often as logistically feasible, for everyone in the family. You can also start a culture of one-on-one -on -one time with your oldest adolescent girls. Girls distance themselves from their parents when facing new risks and making decisions of greater consequence than ever before. Girls who are eager to leave their childhood behind often equate being older with taking an interest in sex. They can do an alarmingly good job of mimicking adult sexuality. If they aren't singing provocative songs, they may be trying out risque outfits, heavy makeup, or seductive dance moves. Girls also use online environments to try on personas that don't match their actual personalities. By posting risque comments or images that suggest sophistication, girls sometimes conduct digital experiments in parting with childhood. If your daughter's posts don't accord with the girl you know, don't assume that she's doing every wild child thing she boasts about. But don't be naive either. Have a conversation with her about what you found online and ask her to explain what's going on. Chapter 3. It is possible to manage the stress and rivalry that often arises when girls gain or maintain membership in a tribe. Before adolescence, most girls are happily grounded within their families and have their most intimate relationships with their parents and siblings. After adolescence, girls tend to loosen their close ties to their families and strengthen their connections with their peers. Teenage girls aren't just looking to make friends. They are in search of a tribe that will take the place of their families. Further. A girl's membership in a tribe will shape and be shaped by her interests. Academic achievement, social status, sense of personal worth, and even her bend toward risk-taking behavior. Nodding and asking genuine questions about your daughter's view of a situation can also go a long way toward developing her thinking. It's crucial to know that teenage girls create tribes with the purpose of creating a group that doesn't include adults. Hence, going outside of their group to get help from an adult, even for life-threatening behavior, can feel like a huge betrayal. If your daughter comes to you about a friend's problems, make a point of letting her know she's made the right call. Supporting her should be your priority. 
going around your daughter to act on something that she has told you in confidence will damage her willingness to trust you with sensitive information and may keep her from coming to you for help, guidance, or a reality check in the future. Teens aren't addicted to social media. They're addicted to each other. Dana Boyd At its best, digital technology gives teens a way to build and maintain their friendships, even when they can't be together in person. At its worst, digital technology undermines a teen's capacity to cultivate meaningful in-person connections and actually amplifies the negative aspects of their relationships. The online environment brings the possibility of tribal activity, good or bad, to every minute of a girl's day. Talk with your daughter about unkind online behavior and make it clear that she doesn't have to like everyone, but she should never conduct herself in ways that are less than polite. Chapter 4 Understanding your daughter's efforts to tackle emotions will allow you to maintain your sanity. A teenager's feelings can catch parents off guard because between the ages of 6 and 11, children go through a development phase that psychologists refer to as latency. As the term implies, the initial moods of early childhood reduce drastically, and girls are quite easygoing until they become teenagers and their emotions kick up again. Teenage girls often manage their feelings by dumping the uncomfortable ones on their parents. Whenever your daughter complains, you should listen quietly and remind yourself that you are giving her a way to unload the stress of her day. If you really want to assist your daughter in managing her distress, help her see the difference between venting and complaining. Venting conveys that I'll feel better when someone who cares about me hears me out. Complaining communicates a sense that someone should fix this. You want your daughter to learn from their emotional discomfort and use it to direct and drive their growth. Learn to validate your daughter's emotions. Once a girl believes that her parents comprehend where she's coming from, she's usually willing to consider their advice or find her own solution. And don't try to guilt your daughter out of a feeling. When it comes to dealing with emotional distress, research tells us that girls discuss while boys distract. In other words, girls tend to manage their hard feelings by talking about them. By seeking out their friends or parents for help, girls put themselves in touch with valuable social support and take a smart, mature approach to deal with stress. In contrast, talking about problems at length can turn into what psychologists call rumination, focused attention on distress, and can cause feelings to take on a life of their own. Rumination can lead to depression and anxiety, especially in teenage girls. Girls commune to dissect and analyze their feelings. One way to help your daughter deal with emotional distress is to point her toward her best coping strategies. Every girl has her preferred way of managing emotional distress, even if she doesn't always appreciate that that's what she's doing. Chapter 5. Parents shouldn't exercise their authority for the sake of displaying their power, but to ensure their safety. Figuring out how best to contend with authority is one of the developmental strands of adolescence. Parents are not looking to raise sheep who give in to threats or do everything they're told. By the time they're adults, parents want their daughters to know how to evaluate authority figures while making thoughtful, even tactical choices about when to resist orders and when to toe the line. Don't miss the opportunity to invite your daughter to practice her assertiveness skills on you. Having figured out that adults routinely create arbitrary rules, girls determinedly undertake the massive task of testing the established regulations. Your daughter will test plenty of rules on her own time. It's truly exhausting when your daughter questions nearly everything you say. But you should honor her newfound insight by having honest conversations about your rules. When your daughter questions your authority, take her seriously and offer an explanation, a compromise, or your agreement. Discipline should always come with the opportunity to make things right again. Most teens step over the line with their parents at some point during adolescence, often through open displays of disrespect. We already know that you shouldn't try to correct your daughter's behavior by shaming her. Research on disciplinary practices finds that yelling at teenagers actually exacerbates problem behavior instead of fixing it. Giving a teenager a way to make reparations is the opposite of shaming her. If shame says, you are bad, repair says, you messed up, but you can make it right. Allow teenagers to learn from their mistakes and have a way back to a clear conscience so that they don't, unconsciously, seek out further punishment to bring the scales into balance. When your daughter assesses risk, you want her to assess the right risks. You want her to focus not on escaping adult detection, but on the real dangers they might face. Learn to think carefully about your response when your daughter tells you about her peers' risky behavior. 
As frightening as these tales can be, consider every one of them a gift. News of what so-and-so did gives you an open invitation to have critical conversations with your teenager, the kind of conversations that would come off as unwelcome lectures if broached directly. Chapter 6. Channeling Your Daughter's Press for Independence Toward Meaningful Plans The craving for autonomy, for independence and self-determination, kicks in hard during adolescence. This is a good thing and a sign of normal, healthy development, but in the day-to-day -day raising of a teenager, the adolescent drive toward autonomy can take the form of a teenager refusing to do something simply because a parent has suggested it. The most significant predictor of future behavior is always past behavior. Parents rightfully worry about how teenagers conduct themselves online. With today's technology, a teenager can make, record, and broadly transmit evidence of impulsive misjudgment that can harm her at some point in the future. Anyone who spends time with teenagers knows that they routinely use technology to share things that they would not ultimately want a future boss or college admissions officer to see. One way to offer growth mindset reassurance is to celebrate effort over outcome. Adolescents often craft ambitious plans for the future and become painfully disappointed when things start to crumble or when they feel they don't measure up to their peers. Helping teens deal with disappointment is a time-worn problem that has been blown wide open by the game-changing research of psychologist Carol Dweck. Dr. Dweck identifies two kinds of people. Those with a growth mindset who believe that their talents can be expanded with effort. Those with a fixed mindset who believe that their abilities are static and cannot be changed. Chapter 7. Guiding Your Daughter as She Enters the Complex World Beyond Just Friends when it comes to the strand of entertaining the romantic world, parents are often in the dark about what's happening with their daughters. Girls can be intensely private about their romantic activity and may not talk with their families or even their friends about their emerging love lives. Parents who try to dial into their daughter's romantic world often find that they pick up nothing but static or that only fleeting signals come through. It's important for you to know what you want and to pay attention to what your partner wants. Lisa Damore. PhD. When your daughter mentions that she or her peers are dabbling in romance, don't flip out and shut down the lines of communication. Pay close attention to your daughter's cues about how much you can ask and make the most of these moments. Pose neutral, genuine questions about the meanings of terms they use to describe relationships, the typical arc of these relationships, what the couples do and don't do, and how much physical activity is involved. Teach girls to stand up for themselves while respecting the rights of others. In the swirl of messages about what girls should want and how they are supposed to act, it is expected that girls heed their inner compass. They should hold the reins of their romantic and sexual lives and decide for themselves what they do and don't desire. This will make them feel empowered to express their wishes to their partners. Parents should help their daughters to know their inner compass by making their daughter aware of her inner compass supporting her in asking for what she wants, teaching her how to express what she doesn't want. Girls who come to know and stick up for their inner compasses have the happiest romantic lives of all. If they date, they choose people they like and who treat them with respect. They are the girls who are most likely to have gratifying sexual encounters. Did you know, according to studies done by Lisa Damour, PhD, in the U.S., 3% of girls have had intercourse by age 13 but that number jumps to 28% by age 15, 42% by age 16, 54% by age 17, and 63% by age 18. Chapter 8. There's no more powerful force in the home than a teenager's drive toward autonomy. The final strand of adolescence is caring for yourself. This is where your daughter learns to make wise, independent decisions about her health and safety. Telling your daughter how to manage some of the most personal aspects of her life can inspire, if not provoke her, to want to do the opposite. And that's if she doesn't tune you out altogether. It would be effortless to teach girls how to care for themselves if we could tell them what to do. Before you even consider how to help your daughter take over the work of caring for herself, you'll need to account for her veil of obedience. The veil of obedience refers to what girls do when an adult gives them advice and they don't agree. Or they've stopped listening, but they keep nodding. Below are things adults do or say that gets girls to disregard their advice. Lecture. Take a suspicious tone. Level moral judgments. Overstate risks. 
Girls sometimes do self-destructive things when trying to numb emotional pain, such as heavy drinking, drug use, self-harm, and other dangerous behaviors. Hence, parents find themselves in the position of talking with their daughter about caring for herself without causing her to glaze over. As girls advance along the developmental strand of taking care of themselves, they move quickly into the self-care big leagues of managing themselves around teenage drinking. As your daughter ages, you should continue to talk with her about the contextual factors that make teen drinking especially risky. Make it clear that alcohol impairs the judgment of anyone who drinks it. Don't worry that talking with your daughter about intercourse will come across as encouraging or endorsing teenage sex. Most parents feel awkward about talking with their daughters about their sex lives. Don't expect to have the talk. Instead, plan on a series of conversations. Capitalize on news your daughter offers about her peers to ask a few questions and make a few non-judgmental points. Focus on the risks that come with intercourse instead of rules you can't enforce anyway. If she has questions about sex, answer only what you've been asked instead of telling her everything you've ever wanted her to know on the subject. Conclusion Parents have intense reactions as their girls move through adolescence. Because being a teenager involves pulling parents in and pushing them away, people sometimes talk about adolescence as a punishment that girls inflict upon their parents. Indeed, it's a stressful developmental phase that girls are trying to navigate. Parents can admire their daughter's successes as evidence of their terrific growth and see their trials as proof that they are working on mastering the developmental strands. When you understand the important developmental work your daughter is doing, you'll fret less about some of her puzzling behaviors. Bringing up a young woman will be one of the most vexing, delightful, exhausting, and fulfilling things you will ever do. The job is difficult enough, even under the best conditions, and deserving of much support. When you get that support and understand the developmental tour de force that is adolescence, you can truly enjoy and empower your daughter. Thinking about girls in terms of teenage development strands allows parents to pinpoint the specific achievements that turn girls into grown-ups and make sense of familiar but confusing teenage behavior. Try this. To connect with your teenage daughter, you can establish a family time one evening a week. This might be a game night, movie night, dinner out as a family night, or any other night that fits your tastes. You can enhance the appeal of the family night by having everyone take turns selecting the evening's game, movie, or restaurant, and by scheduling the evening to end with plenty of time for an older teenager to head out for a night with her friends.